You got to set up? Think about it. Okay. Does anyone here know Bon Iver? Nobody here knows Bon Iver. Nobody's from Wisconsin? I thought there was at least one person from Wisconsin in this group. It seems like the right setting. Oh, my. Oh. So true. We're going to hear from Michael Daly in the tent over there. They're doing the Pacific Sustainability Group in a collaboration with Arts and Performance Installation Group they occupy. So they'd like you to drop on by and see what they're doing with the canvas there. Yeah, please. Um, this is the canvas that was uh, taken by the police uh, around May May 1st. And uh, we're so we're redoing it. The city conveniently or, or otherwise lost the canvas. And uh, we're doing the undercoat tonight in preparation for the La Hui Hui A event on Sunday. So please come over and, uh, and uh, lay some colors onto the canvas. Aloha. Oh, I, I, I want to thank uh, some people who got, got all the materials here today. Um, Midori and Damien 
I'm working with Sam and Billy. Wonderful. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, try uh, visit Michael Daly's uh, tent and Pacific Sustainability Group. They still have a banner sitting at DFM, courtesy of DFM. They store our stuff for us, you know, rent free. But okay, uh, right now we have someone, someone uh, uh, named Elima, and then she's with La uh, Hoi uh, Hoi Air, and that's going to occur. Um, the great celebration is going to occur Sunday, this Sunday, uh, starting at what time? Uh, noon. noon. So she's just going to. Uh, uh, say a few words on Loho Iho Iea and the significance of this park, and it's just a great, incredible place, spiritual for me. Aloha mai. My name is Ilima, and um, the cool people at Deoccupy asked me to come and talk about Loho Iho Iea, which is a holiday that we'll be celebrating this Sunday here in this park. And what it really does is it contextualizes the D in the Deoccupy Honolulu part. Um, and uh, Kalahoi Hoi Ea was a national holiday in the Hawaiian Kingdom. And there's a little story behind it. Um, as you know, as you hopefully know, the Kingdom of Hawaii was an independent um, nation uh, throughout the. 19th century, and there was an incident that occurred in 1843 where a sort of out of control British consulate here um, had some problems, and he called on um, a British naval captain named George Paulette to come and uh, kind of use gunboat gunboat diplomacy to fix his problem. And um, what happened was George Paulette arrived in Honolulu Harbor and wanted to talk to Kauikeauli, who was Kamehameha III at the time. And Kauikeauli didn't really talk to uh, naval captains to solve sort of property disputes. And so he kind of refused to see him. And after some back and forth, George Paulette, you know, pointed his guns towards Honolulu and said, you'll speak to me or else. So right there, the sovereignty of Hawaii was being threatened, and so um, because we couldn't uh, stand up to the naval power of Britain, Kauikeuli temporarily ceded sovereignty to Britain while he, um, and then he would go ahead and kind of work to take care of that and rectify the situation. So at that time, George Paulet ordered all the Hawaiian flags down and burned and put up the British flags. And then through the next couple of months, um, there were communications between the British government and the Hawaiian government and um, another British naval captain, um, Richard Thomas, came to Honolulu and saw what was going on and realized that this was kind of crazy and out of control and um, ordered Paulette kind of out of Honolulu and they came to this area which was not city at the time, which was just kind of land and they did a symbolic lowering of the British flag and re-raising of the Hawaiian flag. And um, that is what commemorated Kala Ho'i Ho'i Ea. So Ho'i Ho'i means to return um, something to its rightful place, and Ea is sovereignty or independence. So from that day on, um, that was July 31st in 1843, it was celebrated as a national holiday throughout the kingdom. And it was also on that day that Kauikeuli proclaimed Uamau Ke'eo Ka'ainai Kapono, which the state has appropriated as the state motto and translated as the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. But that's a little bit of a watered down version. If you know Hawaiian language or if you study it, it more has to do with um, sovereignty continues through just acts and things like that, Pono. So, it's a very important holiday. Um, it was banned in 1893 after the illegal, illegal overthrow. So 50 years later, another occupation begins, and that occupation is the one we're still working to um, stop. Another country, the United States. 
So that is what marks this holiday in 1985 or 1986 around there. Um, some of you may be familiar with um, Dr. Kikuni Blaisdell. Yep, him and some others got together and decided that it was time to kind of re-celebrate um, or bring back this holiday. And so they got it here at Thomas Square, named after Admiral Richard Thomas, who came in and helped rectify things. That apartment building over there is called the, um, the, the, the Admiral Thomas building or something. Anyways, that's what the square is named after. And if you look at the old pictures, there were clearer pathways from each of these corners and the middle sections where there's the entrances. And from a, an aerial view, it makes the... Um, Union Jack part of the Hawaiian flag. So this park is very significant in our political history. It's been being celebrated ever since, ever since and growing and growing and growing. And um, it takes up, it used to take up one like Lauhala mat, like about this big. And now it takes up at least a quarter of the park. And there's going to be music all day. It starts at noon with a, a flag ceremony, a lowering of the American flag and a raising of the Hawaiian flag. And then there's a main stage with um, slam poetry, um, music, some announcements and things like that throughout the day. There will also be a discussion tent um, that are going to be covering topics such as biobanking, genetically modified organisms, um, the role commission, sort of the state Akaka bill, military, proposed military buildup in Hawaii, and um, one on media. Lots going on around the park. It's a very decentralized organization, the organizing of this. So you're going to see folks from all different aspects of the sovereignty movement here. Um, some of the things may come, may come across as shocking, and some of it may not. But it's, everybody is here that day. It's a, very, it's a day of unity because people always say that Hawaiians aren't united, and that's part of our problem, but I feel like that's a myth. Um, in countries that have their independence, in countries that have their independence, um, it's okay that different people have different ways of solving problems. Um, however, a lot of people point fingers at Hawaiians and saying because we're not united, because we don't agree on everything, that that's why um, we can't, you know, help ourselves. But we're not the problem. The occupation is the problem. We do all agree on one thing, and that is um, on ending the American occupation in Hawaii. So we'll be here all that day, and we invite you all to come. And thanks a lot for letting me talk a little bit about it today. And um, we really appreciate the way that the Occupy has reached out um, in a show of solidarity. They're going to be really helping us out a lot that day. And um, we really appreciate that and acknowledge that connection. Mahalo. Thank you for speaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you, Lima. Yeah, we need we need to get rid of the occupation and and we need to get rid of like the genetically modified occupation too. I don't know if you guys heard about that. But anyway, yeah. So uh, right now we're just gonna make an open mic while Brian Bilski and and the guys just set up their their uh, set up here. So we're just going to make it open mic. And, yeah, so uh, stay tuned. we got another band that's coming up. Yeah. Stay tuned. we got another band coming up. Thanks, Nova. All <laughs> oh, right. Who wants to hear a joke? Wall Street. <laughs> that was pretty funny, I know. Um, so I could turn on my iPod, or does anyone want to play anything? We got some jokers over here. Okay, I have a joke. <clears throat> okay, so there's a number of different people on a boat, the different ethnicities, going to their respective countries. Okay, there's a uh, there's a Japanese, a Hawaiian, a Chinese a Portuguese and a Haole, okay? They're all on a boat. And what happens is, there's a almost sinking of the boat. There's a problem, there's a hole in it or something. And so, they all survive, or, um, well, after this almost sinking, there is a uh, interview, right? There's a, there's a news reporter interviewing them. And she, she asking, oh, how did you guys make it through, right? Of rice over the side of the boat, 
and made it lighter. And and then okay, she's okay. So then she goes and she asks the uh, the Portuguese guy, and he's like, oh well, there's plenty of because all went to their respective countries, right? There's plenty of uh, Portuguese sausage in my country. I don't need any more Portuguese sausage in my country. So I threw the bags of Portuguese sausage over, and also there's all these life vests too. So I threw them over too. And uh, and then they asked the Chinese guy, and he says, oh, there's plenty of money in my country. So I had bags of money. So I threw them over. And then she asked the Hawaiian guy, he says, I threw the holly over. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, okay, so I have another one, another Portuguese joke. I'm trying to remember them from my, my uh, elementary school days. Okay, this is, a, this is a crowd pleaser back in my time. Um, so there's three people and they get uh, shipwrecked on an island. Uh, is a is a Japanese, a Hawaiian, and a Portuguese, and there's a bunch of cannibals on this island. But the cannibals have a sense of uh, humor; they're entertainment. So they say, "Okay, we won't eat you if you can stick ten fruits up your butt. Any what? fruits you want, you have to go forage for them and get them." Oh, so no. the um the Japanese guy goes first, and he finds he finds a bunch of cherries, and he gets seven cherries up his butt, but then he can't fit any more, and so they kill him and eat him. And he's up in heaven, he's all pissed off because he's dead. And uh, he's waiting, you know. And all of a sudden, the Hawaiian guy comes up, but he's laughing. And, and, or he's watching, actually. And the Hawaiian guy, he got, he got nine grapes up his butt, and he couldn't get the last one. And, but he comes up and he's laughing. And the Japanese guy's like, why are you laughing? You're so close. You must be disappointed. And he's like, well, I've seen the Portuguese. He had pineapples. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, well, it, if you guys were in kindergarten, you guys would be cracking up way worse. Um, yeah, that's all the ones I can think of. I told something last, or a few, the other, the other uh, one of these we had. Um, let me think. There's got to be more. Anyone know any Portuguese jokes? Oh, my lord. Oh, okay, wait, wait. Okay. Okay, here, I know one. I know an equivalent. It's a Scandinavian version, though. I'll be back.